Here we are, another Star Wars Disney Plus show review. And this one is not the Bad Batch, it's not the Mandalorian, it's kind of the Mandalorian. It is the Mandalorian Disney Gallery. So this is the Disney Gallery that they've released multiple episodes of. They did a lot of it for season one, and then after season two of the Mandalorian, they released one episode that was really long, and it kind of went over the whole season. But they specifically left out the making of the finale, and how they did Luke Skywalker uh, in the finale episode of season two. They completely left that out, and we were wondering, why did they leave that out of the making of... Uh, season two it's because we were going to make a whole episode based on what they did and i understand now why they waited and made an entire uh episode of disney gallery for the luke skywalker moment because there's a lot in this there's a lot of what went into this whole process of bringing luke skywalker back and this episode is more about luke skywalker rather than the finale itself so it, it hardly goes into actual detail on what actually happens in the finale of The Mandalorian. It only goes into detail on Luke Skywalker. So I did make some videos a little earlier on when this was announced saying uh, maybe Lucasfilm would cut Gina Carano from this. You know, maybe they, you know, I was worried maybe they would cut Gina Carano even though, uh, you know, she was heavily involved in the finale along with all, a lot of the other actors. And... What I could say is they pretty much cut everyone from this from this uh, making of season two finale. So I'm not too worried about this episode. It was actually pretty good. Um, they pretty much cut everything but Luke Skywalker. Like they didn't focus much on anything else but that. So that's what this whole episode is. It's just about Luke. And it was beautiful. There's so much in this I can't cover in one whole video. But um, you just have to watch it. You just have to watch it and just witness true magic. I mean, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, you have to watch this episode of the Disney Star Wars The Mandalorian Gallery to understand why I have so much faith in John Favreau and Dave Filoni and what they're doing in Star Wars. Like, this is why I still have faith in Disney Star Wars. There are so many people right now that are so critical and just so done with Star Wars. And I get it. There's lots of reasons why, but John Favreau and Dave Filoni are geniuses absolute geniuses and they are the only thing i think can save star wars and you can see that when you watch this so i'm gonna go over some of the highlights of this ep this disney gallery episode here and it was so cool it went into every little detail that they went into to recreating luke skywalker so we do get some uh, interviews here with mark hamill and dave filoni john favreau those are some of the bigger interviews uh, you also got some interviews with the director of the episode as well and he just talks about how they brought him in and you know got him involved with this finale episode of the mandalorian so Essentially, they brought Luke, they brought Mark Hamill in to portray Luke Skywalker once again. We knew this now. We've known this for a little bit now. And Luke's, yes, Mark Hamill's back. He came back as Luke Skywalker. And they actually went and, you know, did some testing. And he, he wanted to come back. And he ended up coming back. And I'm going to really, really make it short and simple here. They brought him back. And they also had a stunt double. And the stunt double, they kind of did the scene side by side. Uh, they filmed it. And they did all the CGI over it. And... They de-aged him. They did that, I think, over deep faking. And they, in the video, in the actual episode, they described how they considered using deep faking, but I believe they used a de-aging uh, CGI type thing rather instead, which we obviously can tell when you watch the episode. But there are some amazing interviews with John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Like every single one of these like galleries, Disney galleries, or interview interviews in general of these guys is just. It's so fascinating to watch their perspective on Star Wars. Like it, it's so so amazing to watch. It, they, just, they just care so much about what they're making, and they care so much about what the fans think and how the fans are going to react, and you know what the fans are actually going to want. And that is why I just have so much faith. I mean, what they are saying, it just makes so much sense, and I, I love it. I love how they speak about Star Wars. That is how I feel about Star Wars. And I, I am so glad we have these people at Lucasfilm who are feeling the same way. And they understand what the fans are going to want and how to tell this story right. And I, I cannot get enough of it. Like, I am so excited for what they are doing in the future of Star Wars here with the Ahsoka show, the Book of Boba Fett, the Mandalorian Season 3. All of these projects Filoni and Favreau are involved in, I'm all here for it. Like, I am all here for it. I almost have no doubts about it. It's going to be probably fantastic. I can't say it officially will be, but 
it's probably going to be great. It's probably going to be great. These guys are genius. So there's only one thing in this I really didn't like, and that is at the beginning of the episode where they kind of throw in this whole little segment of praising Kathleen Kennedy, and it was very strange, actually. It almost felt very forced in there, and I, I just see that as a Lucasfilm thing, trying to be like, oh, but Kathleen Kennedy's amazing. And, you know, it's like, whatever. It, it's really frustrating to uh, see that, but, I mean, I understand where they're coming from in that part, because she is, you know, the president of Lucasfilm. She does approve all these projects. I understand. And, you know, she has approved some amazing stuff. Like, The Mandalorian itself, she's giving John Favreau and Dave Filoni this this freedom here to create these projects and I understand that and I'm glad she has done that. I don't feel like she's handled the franchise of Star Wars in general that well uh, obviously and the sequel trilogy was one of the biggest things you could really fumble and she did. So that's all I'm going to say really about that but they did put that in the beginning it was really noticeable and you know it is what it is but uh, it's cool to see George Lucas once again though on set of course we do know he was on set and yeah it's cool to see George Lucas they don't talk much about him but they definitely did include this shot of him there. This entire gallery episode is literally just covering most of the actual uh, CGI and the technology around recreating Luke Skywalker's face for the Mandalorian season two finale. That was the big focus of almost the whole entire thing is how they you know, went about recreating Mark Hamill's young face on the CGI recreation because faces are very hard to do because people, you know, we look at faces every day and we recognize different little things and uh, people are going to notice when things are off. And that is immediately what a lot of people did notice when the, the, you know, the finale came out and they noticed how Luke Skywalker's face looked a little off because they still haven't, I guess, perfected it yet. But they did a, pre they did a pretty damn good job. They really did. And it, it really, I really appreciate what they did even more when I watched this though, because of all the different things they did. They did multiple shots. They did this lighting, you know, dome thing. And I think they call it like the egg or whatever i don't remember no, i don't necessarily remember but they had lighting shots of mark hamill here and they were very very particular and specific about how they were going to recreate this scene and capture mark hamill's face and then how they were gonna you know capture the lighting and get the the stunt double in i, I it was such a complicated process and I can't explain it here. I really can't. It was a very, very complicated process. And they go into a lot of detail. That's why it's like a f over 40 minute long uh, special, pretty much just talking about this. There is a lot of technology that goes into this and I, I can really appreciate that scene more. Even if it still does look a little off, it, it's probably still going to. I mean, if you look at Tarkin in Rogue One, it is going to look a little off still, but it's really damn good. Like, it, it's a damn good achievement. But there was also some really funny things in this, too. Uh, Plo Koon, as we know from the Clone Wars or the prequel movies, uh, he was a Jedi who was killed in Order 66. And the code hidden, the hidden code Jedi name that was dropped in the script and whatever for the finale was Plo Koon's return instead of Luke Skywalker. And this was to kind of keep the secret of Luke Skywalker hidden. So this is kind of like a funny little CGI visual that they gave here uh, in the episode. And it looks really funny here, but uh, essentially... Dave Filoni's, one of his, Dave Filoni's favorite Jedi is Plo Koon, he mentions, and that was kind of their code Jedi to kind of mask the whole Luke Skywalker coming back thing. A lot of people ended up thinking, you know, maybe behind the scenes that it was Plo Koon that they were going to end up bringing back, but ultimately it was actually Luke Skywalker, so uh, they went, they literally went ahead and ended up creating like a whole CGI model of Plo Koon's head, and they really went into detail on recreating Plo Koon here just to hide the Luke Skywalker secret. So they really, really had a lot into hiding the Luke Skywalker secret, and they did damn good. They hid Luke Skywalker's secret. It was hidden all the way until the episode aired. Um, all the other, they mentioned in the episode how all the other casting for season two of The Mandalorian did end up leaking, and it was all true. You know, Tamara Morrison, Katie Sackhoff coming back, you know, Rosario Dawson, all these names leaked well before season two even aired. But we never ended up finding about out about Luke Skywalker coming back, and it paid off. What, whatever they did, and to keep the secret, it paid off, and we didn't know until the end. So, uh, some really cool shots here of Mark Hamill just behind the scenes of the episode, and it's just super cool. It's super cool to see him finally back as Luke Skywalker. Um, I'm really glad they got him to come in and you know give his input 
film for this specific scene. Uh, it's, I just think it's awesome that the real person behind that scene there is actually Mark Hamill rather than, you know, a stunt. I know, I, I know they used a stunt double. I don't necessarily know how they morphed it together, but obviously they filmed with Mark Hamill and you can see that right there. So obviously Mark Hamill is involved in that final scene and that just makes it even more special. And I love it. I, I so love it. And Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni and John Favreau. I just have to say once again, just these interviews in this episode are just brilliant. You need to watch it. I would honestly recommend watching it just to listen to them talk about Star Wars. Just watch it to listen to them talk about Star Wars. Any chance you can get to listen to John Favreau and Dave Filoni talk about Star Wars, just do it. Just do it. It's great. It's absolutely great. So here's another shot here of all the different processes they went through. And, you know, they were really, really specific on how to try and capture Mark Hamill's face from the original trilogy. They went through so many different angles and shots throughout the trilogy on, you know, they even went through interviews from Mark Hamill back in the day to try and capture all these different lighting angles and just different looks of Luke Skywalker throughout the original trilogy to write, to try and recreate and capture as realistic face as possible for the Mandalorian. And the, the amount of work that went into it is pretty fantastic. I mean, even if it didn't ultimately turn out to be the most realistic thing ever because they meant they even say that in this episode where they're not it's not necessarily perfected just yet but they're going to get there and it's going to end up being there one day where you're not even going to be, be able to tell the difference but uh for the big process they went through i think that they did a good job uh obviously if you watch the episode it is a little stiff you could tell luke's face is a little stiff in that final scene but they did a good job it obviously looks like a young mark hamill so i think all their research and technology that they used it paid off i would say i would say it paid off and i feel like it's maybe even going to get better from there so here's a shot here of some of the stunt doubles you can see from behind the scenes this guy right here on the right is the main stunt double that they use for luke and i would assume this is the guy they had uh, in the cloak when Luke's going through the halls of the cruiser. So obviously we pretty much predicted this as well. So they got Mark Hamill in to actually film the scene at the end with the whole reveal of his hood coming off. And that's kind of what they got Mark Hamill for, but everything else was with the stunt double, which makes sense. The hood was down the whole time anyway. So uh, that's immediately what I figured they were doing. This episode of the Mandalorian gallery for the, you know, the Mandalorian season two finale, it mainly just focused on Luke. There's not much else I could say that you have to watch the episode to really grasp the amount of details that they actually go through in the recreation of Luke Skywalker in the Mandalorian finale. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next because I think we're going to see more of Luke. And I don't know what kind of process they're going to use. Maybe they will jump back and use Deepfake because they did hire a Deepfake artist from YouTube recently. And uh, perhaps they're going to go with the Deepfake route because they did mention Deepfake a lot in the making of episode here and they i think they ultimately just decided not to use it then but they could use it in the future and honestly i would i think that's the best route i personally think that's the best route but i feel like we're going to see a lot more of luke in the future here and it was really cool to see just how the whole process went together and um, considering how much of a process went to create this one little scene i don't know how they're going to go ahead and create uh, multiple more scenes of luke even like full on episodes and even multiple episodes of like a season or a show perhaps with Luke and Grogu. I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they will just get like an actor like Sebastian Stan, but it seems like they are very determined to have the the CGI, an actual young Mark Hamill rather than an actor who looks very much like a young Mark Hamill, which I understand, but I would it's just a lot more to deal with and i'm surprised they would want to go with that i would be surprised if they want to go with it but i'm also not you know i mean it makes sense so that is my thoughts on episode two of the season two uh gallery star wars the mandalorian uh super cool episode lots of detail on luke skywalker for that finale and that's it they don't cover the finale it's just luke but I'm okay with it. That's the thing everybody wanted to see and I'm glad they covered it and some really amazing interviews as well. 